went to preach the gospel in Philippi. Paul and Silas were in the inner cell of the prison in Philippi. Even though the two men were in prison, they prayed and praised God. We must also pray prayers of thanksgiving in difficult circumstances. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 We must have faith to sing praises in the night. Job chapter 35 verse 10 We must consider it joy to participate in the sufferings of Christ. Matthew chapter 5 verse 11 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 13 We must look towards the prize and be joyful. We must consider it joy to participate in the sufferings of Christ. Paul and Silas were not disheartened but joyful even in prison. Then God's great power worked in the place. Read chapter 16 verse 26. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken. The chains that bound Paul and Silas were loosened. God shook the ground in this way. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 26 God is the God who gives freedom. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 when God opens doors, there is no one who can close them. Psalm chapter 117 verse 1 Verse 27 The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. The jailer woke up and thought the prisoners had escaped through the open prison doors. Because he was responsible for the prisoners, he was about to kill himself. Then Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. Verse 30 he then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The jailer asked Paul and Silas, What must I do to be saved? He asked about the way to salvation. Verses 31 through 32 They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. Anyone can be saved if they believe in Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14 verse 6, Acts chapter 4 verse 12. There is no other way to enter heaven than through Jesus. Those who call upon the name of Jesus can be saved. Jesus leads us to the path of salvation. Jesus is the only source of salvation. Whoever believes in Jesus will be saved, him and his household. When one person believes in Jesus and evangelizes to his family, they will all believe. 
If one person believes and others do not, then those who do not believe will not be saved. However, if one person believes in Jesus and preaches the gospel, then his entire family can be saved. Zacchaeus and his family were all saved. Luke chapter 19 verse 9 Through the faith of Cornelius, his entire household was saved. This is in Acts chapter 10. The entire family of the prostitute Rahab was saved through her faith. Therefore, that one person is important. When one person in a neighborhood preaches the gospel with his or her faith in Jesus, then there are many cases where the entire neighborhood receives the gospel. There is no other way to salvation than through Jesus. For that reason, Paul went to foreign lands to preach the gospel. If people received salvation for believing in anything, then there would be no need to evangelize. There would be no need to go to other countries to evangelize. However, because it is only through Jesus that one can be saved, we must evangelize and go to other countries for missions. Verse 35, verse 33, At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. The jailer washed the wounds of Paul and Silas. Then he believed in Jesus and was baptized. Then his household believed in God and rejoiced. Verses 35 through 36 When it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jailer with the order, Release those men. The next day, the magistrates ordered that Paul and Silas be released. It was revealed that Paul and Silas had done nothing wrong. Verse 37 but Paul said to the officers, They beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens. Paul used his rights as a Roman citizen. When we need to use our rights as citizens, we must do so. There are times when we can use our earthly rights. If we are in high government positions, we can use that in our faith. Then why didn't Paul use his rights as a Roman citizen from the beginning? This was so that he could receive the sufferings that Jesus gave him. John chapter 18 verse 11 It was also an opportunity to preach the gospel to those in prison. Hence, he was able to preach the gospel to whomever he met. Therefore, we must use our rights as citizens when needed. Verses 38 through 39 The officers reported this 
to the magistrates. The magistrates were afraid when they heard that Paul was a Roman citizen. By law, they were not allowed to beat or imprison Roman citizens. Therefore, these magistrates were afraid. Verse 40. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house. Paul and Silas came out of prison, consoled the believers at Lydia's house, then went to another location. Paul and Silas encouraged them to stand firm in their faith. We will continue with Acts chapter 17. The title is Evangelism in Thessalonica and Athens. First, the establishment of the Church of Thessalonica, verses 1 through 9. Second, the attitudes of the people of Berea, verses 10 through 15. Third, evangelism in Athens, verses 16 through 34. Read chapter 17, verse 1. Paul and Silas went from Philippi to Thessalonica. They went there where there was a Jewish synagogue. Here on the map, is Philippi. This is the region of Macedonia. This is Macedonia in Greece. This is Philippi. Right next to it is Thessalonica. The two men traveled from Philippi to Thessalonica. Amphipolis is located about 30 about 52 kilometers southwest from Philippi. Then from there they went to Apollonia which is about 52 kilometers away. From Apollonia they went to Thessalonica which is about 58 kilometers away. The distance from Philippi to Amphipolis is 52 kilometers. Then 50 kilometers from there is Apollonia. 58 kilometers southwest from Apollonia is Thessalonica. Verses 2 through 3. As his custom was, Paul went into the synagogue. Paul went to the Jewish synagogue in Thessalonica. He taught there for three weeks. He testified about Jesus Christ. He testified about Jesus Christ with the Old Testament scriptures. They did not cease, but continuously preached the gospel. They taught the Bible. Therefore, God's works were great where they went. Christ, who was prophesied in the Old Testament came. This Christ received sufferings. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 1 through 6. This Christ died and rose again in three days. Psalm chapter 16 verse 10. Paul preached in this way and testified to Jesus Christ. 
it is important that we learn the Bible and teach the Bible. Verse 4. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas. A large number of God-fearing people and prominent women followed Paul and Silas. There were many prominent believers. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 5 through 10. Verse 5. But the Jews were jealous. So they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. However, some of the Jews became jealous again. They started a riot in the city. Then they rushed to Jason's house and searched for Paul and Silas to drag them out. The Jews thought that Paul and Silas were at Jason's house. Thus, they went to catch Paul and Silas there. However, Paul and Silas were not at Jason's house. Hence, the Jews became angry and dragged Jason out. Then they accused him by saying, These men have caused trouble all over. They are all defying Caesar's decrees. They serve another king called Jesus. They accused the believers. The Jews accused Paul and Silas by saying, These men have caused trouble all over. They are all defying Caesar's decrees. They serve another king. They continued to accuse the believers. The Jews accused them further, saying, They are destroying public law and order. They are plotting against the nation. Verses 8 through 9 When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. They made Jason post bond and let him go. Jason was let go because Paul was not present. Verse 10 As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. Paul and Silas were sent to Berea. Berea is about 64 kilometers southwest of Thessalonica. They went to the Jewish synagogue and preached there. Verse 11. Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians. The Bereans were of noble character. They received the word of God with great eagerness. They read and examined the scriptures every day. This shows that the Bereans were noble, which means that their character was honorable. This means that they were people with good character. They opened their hearts. They received the gospel genuinely. First, they were well-mannered. Second, 
They eagerly received God's word. Psalm one nineteen verse one thirty one. Third, they read and examined the Bible. They continuously read the Bible and looked deeply into it. They meditated on the Bible. They read diligently. Revelation chapter one verse three, John chapter five verse thirty nine, Habakkuk chapter one verse two. Then many people believed. Even the prominent woman believed. The men also believed. Verse thirteen. When the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea, they went there too. The Jews went to Berea and persecuted Paul and Silas. Therefore, these Jews followed Paul and Silas and continued to persecute them. Verses fourteen through fifteen. The brothers immediately sent Paul to the coast, but Silas and Timothy stayed at Berea. Paul and Silas ended up in Athens. Athens is three hundred and twenty kilometers south of Berea. Now let's take a look at the map. Here on the map is Thessalonica. This is Thessalonica. It is, and then three hundred and twenty kilometers south from there is Athens. This is northern Greece. This is known as the region of Macedonia. This is southern Greece. The southern area is Achaia. Athens is located here. Verse sixteen. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed. To see that the city was full of idols. Athens is the center of Greek culture. This was a city with advanced philosophy, culture, and art from ancient times. However, everyone there served idols. They were advanced in worldly culture and philosophy, but religiously, they were serving idols. The people believed themselves to be wise and highly educated in philosophy, but they served idols because they did not know the true God. Therefore, whoever does not believe in Jesus is foolish. Paul was greatly distressed. He became frustrated when he saw that people did not know God and worshipped idols. Verse seventeen. So he reasoned in the synagogue. With the Jews and the God-fearing Greeks, Paul reasoned in the synagogue with the people. Paul was in the marketplace. Paul reasoned with and preached the gospel to whomever he met in the marketplace. Verse eighteen. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to dispute with him. There were many schools of Greek philosophy. 
There was a group of Epicurean philosophers. These people were born on the island of Samos in 348 B.C. They were atheists. They were hedonistic. They were materialistic. Then there were Stoic philosophers. A man named Zeno was the founder of the Stoic school of philosophy. Zeno was born on the island of Cyprus in 336 B.C. He advocated pantheism. This is the belief that everything is a god. He also advocated moralism and said, "Man's soul is a small part of the universe and its reason." The Greek philosophers and Paul. Debated with one another. These people did not want to believe in Jesus. They believed that their wisdom was the best. Their wisdom became their idol. Therefore, Paul's preaching did not have much effect in Athens. Paul told Timothy. Not to associate with these people. Second Timothy chapter two verse twenty three, verses nineteen through twenty. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus. The people wanted to know what this new teaching was. These people always attempted to learn new things. However, they did not want to receive the gospel. The people of Athens served gods by setting up an altar for an unknown god. Yet, they did not know the true God. Therefore, Paul said to them, "I will proclaim to you about the true God, whom you do not know of." Verses twenty-four through twenty-five. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth, and does not live in temples. Built by hands. God is the God who gives all men life and breath. Paul correctly testified about God. Verse twenty-six. From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth. God created Adam and Eve. We are all descendants of Adam. We are all of one blood. Our God determined the times for us. God chose the exact places where we should live. God chose the nations and borders. Not only did God choose the times of man, but also the times of nations. He is in control of the rise and fall of nations. God is in control over man and his breath. Therefore, Paul told these people to seek this God. Our God is always with us. Jeremiah chapter twenty-three, verse twenty-four. 
Our God is beyond creation, is with creation, and is in control over all of creation. Verses 28 through 29. For in him we live and move and have our being. One Greek said, we are all God's offspring. We are a God's offspring. This means that they believed themselves to be a God's offspring. However, Paul told them, We are the offspring of the true God. Our God is the Creator. Therefore, Paul taught the people that they must not serve an image of gold, silver, or stone that man has made. What has been made by man is an idol. It is not God. Paul told the people to serve the true God. Verse 30, in the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance. To have overlooked such ignorance means that God let the people be. However, the gospel was being preached and everyone was given the opportunity to believe in Jesus. Therefore, everyone must repent and believe in Jesus. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 Verse 31 For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. The man he has appointed refers to Jesus Christ. God sent Jesus Christ. Then in the future, there will be a day when the world will be judged with justice through Jesus. God raised Jesus from the dead. God showed signs so that one would believe in Jesus. God showed the people many signs after Jesus resurrected from the dead. Therefore, Paul was telling the people to throw away their idols and return to God. If they were to continue to not believe in Jesus, they would be judged through Jesus. Paul preached the gospel, yet some people sneered at Paul. Still, some people told Paul that they would like to hear about the gospel again. Verse 34 A few men became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysius, a member of the Areopagus, also a woman named Demaris, and a number of others. There were a few men among the crowd who believed. Still, there were not many believers in Athens. Why did evangelism in Athens fail? First, the people who were high in rank saw the message of the cross as foolish. 
Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 29. It is difficult for people high in rank in the world to believe in Jesus. The cross looks foolish to them. Also, why did evangelism fail in Athens? Paul tried to preach with the knowledge of man. He attempted to evangelize through the ways and means of man. As a result, Paul was determined when he traveled from Athens to Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 4 through 5. When Paul went to Corinth, he was determined not to preach with the wisdom of man. He was determined to evangelize with only the power of God and the Holy Spirit. Thus, Paul wanted to go to Corinth and evangelize. We must also evangelize not with the wisdom of man, but with the wisdom and power of God. We will continue the lecture with Acts chapter 18. The title is The Church of Corinth. First, the establishment of the Church of Corinth, verses 1 through 11. Second, persecutions verses 12 through 17. Third, the vow, verse 18. Fourth, the return, verses 19 through 22. Fifth, the third missionary journey, verse 23. Sixth, evangelism of Apollos. Verses 24 through 28. Today's chapter is about Paul's travels and evangelism in Corinth. He went from Thessalonica to Athens. Right below Athens is Corinth. This is southern Greece. This is the region of Achaia. Paul went to Corinth to preach the gospel. Read chapter 18 verses 1 through 2. After this, <coughs> Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul met Priscilla and Aquila in Corinth. The distance from Athens to Corinth is about 80 kilometers. Corinth is the capital of Achaia in the south. There Paul met Priscilla and Aquila. They were people with good faith. Verse 3 And because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Paul stayed in Aquila's home. Paul preached the gospel of God. Then Aquila's household 
believed in Jesus. His occupation was a tent maker. Paul also knew how to make tents. Therefore, Paul stayed with Priscilla and Aquila, sold tents, and made money. Paul earned his living, and with it he did missions work. He also did missions work with the money that churches sent him. When Paul ran out of money, he earned his own money and used it for missions. Verse 4 Every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. Paul preached in the synagogue every Sabbath. He preached to the Jews and the Greeks. He taught the Bible. Many people believed in the gospel. Then the church of Corinth was established. Verse 5 When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. Paul, Silas, and Timothy came from Macedonia to Corinth. Then Paul testified to Jesus even more courageously. He was held by the word of God. He preached to the Jews. He preached to the Greeks. Verse 6 But when the Jews opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clear of my responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Paul first preached to the Jews. Yet there were some among them who became abusive and criticized Paul. Then Paul shook out his clothes. Your blood be on your own heads. This means that whoever does not believe must be responsible for his actions. The Jews did not believe, therefore their blood would return to them. Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 17 through 19. Matthew chapter 10, verse 14. Thus, Paul went and preached the gospel to the Gentiles. Verse 7. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titius Justus, a worshiper of God. Paul went to the house of Titius Justus and preached there. Verse 8 Crispus, the synagogue ruler, and his entire household believed in the Lord. Then Crispus, the synagogue ruler, believed. His entire household believed. The gospel entered his home. Then many Corinthians believed and were baptized. Verses 9 through 10. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. One night, 
The Lord came to Paul in a vision. The Lord said, "Do not be afraid." The Lord said, "Do not be silent." The Lord promised that He would be with Paul and help him. The Lord said there were many chosen believers in the city of Corinth. We must keep this in mind when we evangelize. God sends His missionaries and evangelists. Therefore, we must not hold back, but continue to evangelize. Also, we must not be afraid of those who attack us. We must believe that God is with the evangelist and missionary. We must believe. That God will bear an abundance of fruit in the mission field. Again, preach continuously. Do not be afraid. God is always with those who preach the gospel. God will bear much fruit. Paul stayed and preached the word of God for one year and six months in the city of Corinth. It is very important to teach the Bible. It is also important to learn about the Bible. Here we will conclude the fourteenth lecture. On the Book of Acts. Thank you.